So not too many more to go forward. Will it be Godolphin on the score sheet in our Group 2 Dubai Gold Cup? Tire motors. 3,200 metres to race. And uh, away they go. East Asia, a little bit slow. Rodrigo Diaz from the worst of the draws, a bit slow, but probably by design. Now it's such wait and watch. Volcanic Sky, first one to break. Stay Foolish, got a good position in the early stages. Bonobo's a bit headstrong in the early stages. The all blue colours. He's fighting with William Buick at the moment. Miranak also goes handy as well. El Madar's a little bit closer than usual. Veloce Oro is at the outside. Now that Manobo's latched onto somebody, he's settled well. Castlebar's at the outside. Then comes Baron Samadhi. The cheap piece is one off the rail. El Madar next. A length away to Aliniak the Great. Also a lot closer. They're walking in the early stages. East Asia next best, joined by Passion and Glory. A couple of lengths away to Emperor of the Sun, who races towards the end of the field with Rodrigo Diaz. And there's one lap left left in the Dubai gold cap and the leader is Volcanic Sky got it by about half a length Veloce Oro wants to try and get up but races now three parts of a length away in second Castle Bar exposed had to make a move races out deep but now third Stay Foolish ends up with a good position against the real rail then comes Miranak who's in the white and red colours Manobo about four lengths off the leader kept company by El Madar Baron Samadhi next best they followed further back by East Asia Emperor of the Sun just went dead straight and Emperor of the Sun Fall intends the purposes out of the race. They followed further back then by Passion and Glory. Three quarters of the way back. Blue Jacket, White Cap, Aliniak. And then Rodrigo Diaz, who's at the end of the field. And they saunter onto the back straight. 1,800 metres left to run. Volcanic Sky is the leader by a little less than a length. Castle Bar's one horse that's ready to challenge. Veloce Oro races in between them in third. Then comes Stay Foolish in fourth. Three lengths from the leader. Miranak is next best in a good rhythm. A length and a half away to Manobo, also in a good rhythm now, the first 200 metres weren't memorable since then he's been going a dream then comes El Madar against the inside, East Asia was next best a few lengths away to Passion and Glory then comes Aliniak and Rodrigo Diaz, happy to race at the end of the field, down the back straight they went past the 1200 metres mark Volcanic Sky been in front from the start, a bit of hustling now going midfield, some of them getting quite urgent, Castle Bars half a length away in second, Stay Foolish every chance at the rail in third Veloce Oro is now worked into the open they followed by Miranak at the outside Baron Samadhi Manobo all blue colours still got about four to five lengths to trace down down the side of the course Aliniak's the grey that one's outside he's in striking distance as well two away to Passion and Glory East Asia Rodrigo Diaz has been at the end of the field the whole way around and they're about to take the angle for home just over 600 metres left to run Volcanic Sky then got shaken up towards the top of the straight and led them for home a length and a half. Veloce Oro second, Stay Foolish is third. Manobo in the clear, three lengths off the leader and gaining a lot of ground. El Madar working into the open as well. Castle Bar beaten off. Then further back, we found Passion and Glory. The leader is Volcanic Sky. Manobo now second, Stay Foolish matching him. El Madar's fourth, Manobo getting to the lead. Manobo's got an unbeaten record in his side, but Stay Foolish lays it right down, comes back swinging, and Stay Foolish won. Stay Foolish toppled over Manobo. Third goes to El Madar. What a run. Aliniak fourth. Then came Passion and Glory. They were ahead of Veloce Oro, Volcanic Sky, Rodrigo Diaz, and then came Castle Bar. A few lengths away to East Asia, Miranak. Then came Baron Samadhi. As for Emperor of the Sun, he went about 800 meters and then continued to run straight up towards the hotel. What a thriller that was. Stay foolish really did dig deep to beat Manobo. The hot favourite downed again. Another one for Japan and I don't think they're done yet. When he won in Saudi last time, he went wire to wire and he was the easiest of winners. This time he took back off the pace. He sat the trip, but the difference here is the difference in trips. Willem Buick had an awful, awful trip. He could not get Manobo to settle early on. He tilted him to the outside and then he was stuck under cover. By the time he set him out, he had about five lengths to make up, but Stay Foolish is right here on the inside and he's five lengths clear of him. Manobo comes, Manobo comes, Manobo passes him, but Stay Foolish just had the perfect trip. Great ride from Christophe Lemaire, great battle down to the wire. Two really, really classy horses and these horses are hopefully will hook up again down the road later on this year. Yeah, they were already talking about the Melbourne Cup possibly for Stay Foolish. Well, a bit of a wait in that, you'd think that he has won this for Yoshito Yahagi. What a night for him. Christophe Lemaire riding here for the first time since Almond Eye in 2019. One on the board for him early on. 
Miss Horse, first time over the 3,200 metres, as we mentioned, one over the 3,000 last time. Not a problem at all. And he's the first ever winner in this race for Japan. It's, it, it's really just a remarkable performance from both horses. I mean, battling all the way to the line. And Stay Foolish, I think just maybe the experience edge, right? Stay Foolish making career start number 31, while Monobo just making start number six. Wow, Mada ran an absolutely huge race. He's finished third for Masar Brahmahari. For a second or two, I thought he was going to win it, and then he just hung in a little bit, I think, as he came to the end of his his stamina. Uh, the best of the Brits was a Lignac. They'll be thrilled with that, Jamie and Safi Osborne with fourth. Listen, to run to run fourth, beating just maybe two and a half, three lengths behind Stay Foolish and Minobo, who might be two of the best horses in the world, I, I think you take that any day of the week. And bearing in mind tonight is, we think, a, a not as strong as usual team for Saeed bin Saror. He's had third early run with Storm Damage, and he's finished fifth and sixth here with Passion and Glory in Volcanic Sky. So... I wouldn't want to rule out any of his others later with too much authority. Saeed knows when this day is. As soon as, the, as soon as the calendar comes out, he circles this one in big red pen. It was a thrilling race to watch. It really was. It doesn't, you know, you wouldn't think after two miles it'd come to such a battle like this. But as you say, Manobo went past. He had so much ground to make up. We all thought he was going to do it. He goes past, but he's never really had to battle like this. Every race he's won, he's won on the bridal prize. He's never had a battle. He's never gone this far. And this was a big test for him. And this is a horse that... Look, if you're the Charlie Appleby barn, you're not going to be happy. He was a, a huge favorite and the barn favorite. But at the end of the day, I think Minobo is going to come on spades from here. And I think at the end of the day, Minobo is the horse I want moving forward as what I think will be the best horse in the world when everything's said and done. I imagine they'll target the Gold Cup for Ascot, maybe, with Minobo. Although it's over even further than, than this. Um, well, maybe, as Charlie's mentioned a few times, they'll, they'll drop him back in trip. He, as he said earlier on, as you heard, he's, he's not really a, a dour stayer. Maybe they think he's seen a better effect back at a mile and a half. It would be a nice problem for them to have. As you say, he's run really well, just hasn't had the kind run through the race that the, the winner had. Stay foolish. I mean, he is a classy horse. He was fifth behind Glory Vars and, and Pile Driver and, and the like in the the Hong Kong Vars in, in, in December. So that gives a bit of a boost for their form for later on. Hard to, hard to believe that the Japanese might have more success the rest of the day. But, I mean, this has just been the, the M.O. over the last year, kind of starting here. Love's Only You ran so well in, in the Shima last year. I think it was the Dubai Turf, but ran so well to run second behind Mishrif. And then they just continued on form, continued on form. And they just, here they go. They're two for two in their two races. Yeah, yeah. Thank heavens they don't have Arabians. Might have, won, might have won them all so far. Uh, they're probably going to struggle to win the Alquaz, I think. They've got Ent Scheiden in there, um, and I'm not quite sure what he's doing there. He doesn't really have the best form. They do have Lauda Sai on, though, who's a group one winner. It's, it's one of these things where when things are just clicking in the barn, they're just clicking. And, and that group, that Japanese group is so, so tight. Most of them came directly from Saudi Arabia over here to Dubai. They've been together now for six weeks, and it really just is a, is a family event. They, they start at the barn about 2 o'clock in the morning time, and by 3 o'clock, they're all out riding out the first set that for an hour... They're under tack, walking these horses around before they go out to the track. They love their horses, and it shows in the results here. The Godolphin team are unsaddling Manobo right behind us, and crestfallen would be the word. They're not happy faces. No. It, Appleby camp. It, it must be tough when you, you think, you know, you've prepared, obviously, anyone who, who gets beaten when they've got a hot favourite going to be disappointed but this was the one they were really counting on well i think when we take a look at the race back when all is said and done you're going to see just how much of a trouble trip william buick had it started from the very beginning of the race even though they're going a quarter and 26 and a half and 52 he could never get him settled and switched off and in a two mile race you need to save as much energy as you possibly can and he just couldn't do that early on in the race which has not really been a problem with minobo in the past yeah, first time he'd had a tough race. We said that before. First time he's had a battle. He's probably going to emerge from this a, a better horse, maybe. Manobo, but that won't be much consolation for connections now. And it's gone to this much more experienced that stay foolish for that man, Christophe Lemaire. And it was interesting. I heard him interviewed a few times this week. And he said, yep, I had a great time in Saudi. It was wonderful to have those wins. But I put that behind me and I focus now on, on Dubai World Cup. And today has started out very nicely for him. Thank you very much. Will we see more Japanese success later on today? Bearing in mind, they've got Shari Arshinel Meister was one of the, the warmest favourites on the card at around about 
six to four, I think he is in that Dubai turf. So um, could just be a huge day for them. It's not often really outside of Godolphin that we see trainers with doubles on this card. I suppose John Gosden managed it last year with Mishriff and, and Lord North, but it's, it's a tough thing to achieve, isn't it? No, these are the best horses in the world, and they, they bring their best efforts. And normally, trainers won't have those kind of top-notch contenders in every one of these divisions, but the Japanese have come well-stocked. And look, Todd Pletcher's got chances later on. Doug O'Neill has three chances later on. So th there could be another double on the card as we go on. I'm fairly confident the Japanese won't win the World Cup itself. I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, who knows? We can get a debrief now from our winner because Christophe Lemaire is with Mikey. Christophe Lemaire has once again won one of the big races on the world stage as he weighs out here. Christophe, if you can um, take us through it. It looks like, you know, this horse had a dream trip out there. Yes, definitely. Lucky to be on the inside. Uh, very relaxed. Was slow pace early on, but mm -hmm. then we quickened from uh, last turn. Mm -hmm. My horse was responded very well. As I, as I said before, he's not a, he doesn't have a big turn of foot, but yeah. he's got stamina, and today he had to, fought, to fight very well. Yeah. He had to fight, and yeah. he did it very well. He, before Saudi, he hadn't... Oh, he, one second. Before Saudi, he hadn't um, won in about three years. Now he wins two big races in a row. What do you think is the difference? Yeah, but I think the trip. Uh, now yeah. he can run on a longer, tr longer trip. He get tough, and uh, to be honest, uh, when he came to Middle East, Last time, the, the horse get really stronger and uh, he likes it here. <laughs> he, he likes the heat and uh, uh, more than me. <laughs> but um, yeah, over over distance, uh, I think he's he's going to become uh, one of the best in the world. Well, let's hope so. Hopefully, we we'll see you. In Thank you. Thank you. Christophe Lemaire, such a nice guy. I remember thinking many years ago, he's, this is the best jockey in France. And then he went over to Japan, which is an attractive thing to do because there's so much money. But they don't make it easy for you. I think they give you a translator for a bit and then you have to learn Japanese. 